A terrifying bus crash now in Brazoria County left the bus driver and one student seriously hurt, as well as dozens of others shaken. Now, dash cam video shows when the Columbia Brazoria ISD bus collided right there with the dump truck after the bus driver apparently disregarded construction workers' stop sign. This had to be a terrifying crash for anyone on the school bus. The crash left the bus driver and one student on the bus with injuries. As you can see in the video, this accident happened in the early morning when the dump truck backed into the school bus driver's lane of travel. Based on this video footage, you may be thinking that the dump truck driver was the liable cause of the accident. But what the video does show is that the school bus driver allegedly disregarded a stop sign held by a construction worker at the site. In this video, I give my thoughts on the viability of the school bus driver's injury claim and the injured student's claim. But before I dive into my legal analysis, let me first say that I hope the student and bus driver are doing okay. This appeared to be a significant wreck and I hope all parties involved make a full recovery. Now, to get started on my analysis, it's clear the school bus driver may have a difficult liability claim because he apparently disregarded a stop sign held by a construction worker at the site. But that fact alone doesn't necessarily bar the school bus driver's injury claim. He can still bring an injury claim, but can he win the claim? So it's my understanding this accident happened at or near Houston, Texas. Texas uses a modified comparative negligence law, also known as the 51% rule, to determine how much compensation a plaintiff can receive in a personal injury claim. So basically in Texas, an injured party can recover damages if they are less than 51% at fault for the accident. If the plaintiff is 51% or more at fault, they cannot recover any compensation. So the school bus driver is going to have to show that they were less than 51% at fault. The school bus driver's best argument to make, in my opinion, is to argue that the dump truck driver at a minimum shares liability for the accident because the dump truck driver failed to yield to the bus driver's right of way by coming into the bus driver's lane of travel. The dump truck driver should have been keeping a lookout while backing out and should have seen the school bus driver in that lane of travel before the dump truck driver backed into that lane. Ultimately, what we would be trying to predict is would a jury of strangers buy this argument and assess at least 50% liability on the dump truck driver. It's not clear exactly how a jury would ultimately apportion fault against each driver and more facts would need to be known to determine which driver has the better argument. But the fact that the school bus driver apparently disregarded a stop sign held by a construction worker certainly makes it tougher on the bus driver to potentially get any type of settlement or judgment in their favor in their case. Also, it's important to note that every state adopts its own negligence laws, so it's important that you are familiar with your state's negligence laws if you have an accident in your state. If this accident would have happened in Kentucky, the state I practice law in, for example, the bus driver may have a better shot at recovering at least some compensation. That's because Kentucky is a pure comparative negligence state, meaning you can recover even if you are determined to be 99% at fault, so long as you prove another party is at least 1% at fault. Your recovery of compensation is reduced, though, in proportion to the amount you are deemed at fault. So for example, if you're deemed 99% at fault and another party is deemed 1% at fault, you are entitled to receive 1% of your damages from the other party. So while the bus driver appears to have an uphill battle to climb to potentially get any compensation, the injured student on the school bus is in a much better position with their claim. This is because the student has no liability in the accident whatsoever. The student was just a passenger on the school bus. The student can therefore bring claims against both the school bus driver and the dump truck driver 
in their insurance companies. Because the student has no liability in the accident, the student is entitled to be fully compensated for their injuries. The student may get a settlement from boat drivers insurance companies under these facts. One thing I would also note though is that the student and school bus driver should not be represented by the same attorney as any attorney would have a conflict of interest in representing both of them. Since liability is being disputed in the accident, the school bus driver needs a lawyer that is only going to argue that the dump truck driver is at fault in the accident. The bus driver's position potentially conflicts with the position that the student may need to take in the case and thus a lawyer would have a conflict in representing both the bus driver and the injured student. The thing is, if you are someone that was recently in a car accident and learned anything in this video, you could definitely learn quite a bit by watching the videos on my channel, especially this one about to pop up right here where I teach you step by step what I would do if I was injured in a car accident. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel right here for more helpful videos like this one. Lastly, if you've been injured in Kentucky, remember to don't wait, call Tate.